Using filters is a great way to slice and dice your data to view specifically the values that you're looking for and the ranges that you're looking for. Now there's multiple ways that you can use filters in Spotfire, so let's dive into some examples. So here I'm showing video game sales around the world and for each individual game, I have things like its release date, its genre, its publisher, its critic scores, its user scores, its sales by region. Now we showed in the marking and drill down video lesson that you can probe across your visualizations with markings and these are all brush linked where I can kind of drill across and see how the data is related and how it's all marked across different visualizations. What you can also do is with your marked data, you can actually right click and you can go to marked rows and you can actually filter out those values to remove them or filter to them. So I'm gonna filter to just the action values, the action genre. And now all of the visualizations on my page have adjusted to just show the action genre. So you can see that here in the table visualization, I have just the action genre. And when I did that filter command, it created this column here in my data set. And here I can actually choose to you know, turn that off, turn it on, however I'd like. That is just in my data set now for me to refer to. There's also a filter panel in the top right of the Spotfire interface. And this filtering has been created here at the bottom. I can go ahead and remove this if I want. And now this is back to my original data. The Spotfire filter panel allows me to change different ranges and adjust the filtering for all of this data. And I can apply multiple filterings as I like here to see the different values that I want. So filtering is a little bit different from marking in that instead of just probing around, I'm actually looking for some specific values or specific ranges that I know I want to look for. Whereas the, the markings are more for exploring the data and probing around again. So we, we see that I have different types here. I have these list boxes and I have uh, these check boxes and I have these ranges. These are all created automatically when my data is brought into Spotfire. It's looking at the data type. Uh, if, it's a, if it's a numerical value, if it should be a range, if it's categorical, things like that. If I want, I can change these by right clicking and going to filter type, and I can change these to any of the other applicable methods. So for instance, on developer, this is a, an open text area where I could type in something like Nintendo, or if I don't know what I wanna type in, I can right click and change this to a list box, and now I can see all of the different developers here. Now, the other thing I can do is I can filter by expression. So let's go ahead and reset this and I'm gonna go into this page where I have some, some charts set up. And in my visualization properties, I can go into data and I can go to limit data using an expression. So here I'll say maybe my critic score is greater than eight and I'll hit okay. And this has filtered all the data on this chart only to the, the critic scores being above eight. Now I can go back to my filter panel and I can adjust things. So let's say the release date and things like that. And that's adjusting all the visualizations on my page. However, this is also going to look at the, the filtering on the critic scores above eight. Now I can do this directly into my data panel as well or into my data canvas where I can create transformations and I can add a filter rows transformation and this will filter it for all of the data that's in my entire analysis. That's anything that's using this data table is gonna have this filter transformation that I can put in right here. Now, the other thing I can do is I can actually create a filter transformation directly from my data panel. So I can move this around however I'd like, and I can right click and create a filter transformation. And whatever I have set that to is actually going to automatically go into my data, my data canvas and create this filter transformation. Now, by default, your filter panel is going to apply to the visualizations that are on this page. And you can see that by going into the visualization properties and in data, you'll see these uh, filtering schemes. So use the current filtering from the page as the default, and that's what's in this filter panel, but I also have these other filtering schemes. So let's talk about filtering schemes. You can go into file, and document properties and filtering schemes, and you can create whatever schemes you want. So here I'll create something called 
pre-2000 releases. And you'll see I already have a post-2000 releases there. This checkbox allows this to show for the filtering schemes dropdown. So I'll show you here when I go to my pre-2000 schemes, I can change this to pre-2000 releases. And now this is going to only change the filters on that filtering scheme. So if I take all of my visualizations and I have it only apply to my pre-2000, and I do that on all of these, now I can go down to my release date and I'm going to adjust this so that it only goes up to 2000 for the releases. So this whole page has followed this pre 2000 releases filtering scheme. But on this other page, I've set up the post 2000 releases and in my visualization properties, I've set all of these to only use the post 2000 scheme. So here I'll change this to be from 2000 and beyond. And now I have this page that's showing post 2000 game releases and this page that's showing pre 2000 game releases. And these schemes are kept independent of each other. Now this is really useful if I have different managers that only wanna see different employees under them or if I have different regions for sales and I only want to look at the schemes for, for certain regions, you can make entire customizable schemes this way. Now lastly, you can add filters right into text areas. So I can go ahead and create a text area. And here I can create, uh, I can go to edit text area and I have this little filter button to insert a filter. And here I can do something like critic score and add that in and I'll give it a name, uh, critic score, I'll put that in my text area and I'll save this. And right here in my text area, I now have a filter that I can move around to filter the values on this page.